you know, following first an attack by some goons who had been hired and were following me. They attacked me in front of my house. And uh, I was admitted at Nairobi Hospital following that attack. Then thereafter, uh, I got an information that they were looking for me um, and they may harm me, as narrated in that story. So I took off. I was evacuated from here by the, through the grace of the Catholic Church. One father, Father Marco Pio, and a Catholic nun, Sister Diane, from the United States. They took me on that journey. Early in the morning, they were, they were Father was wearing a collar, and the sister was wearing white, and myself was being carried also with a collar, and my name was Father Augustine from Machakos. That's how the name had been given. We passed through all these roadblocks from Nairobi all the way to Kisumu. We arrived and I was taken to the Catholic mission up on the hill. Again, introduced there as Father Augustine. After a meal in the evening, I was transferred to another mission called Rangala Mission in Ugenya. From there, I was taken home and kept in a house where nobody knew I was present. And I was taken from there early, late in the afternoon, to the beach, one of the deserted beaches of uh, Bondo, called Sirongo Beach. From Sirongo, I boarded a makeshift boat. She was being paddled to an island called Dede Island. It is on Dede Island where I met Robert and another team. The guy who had organized this mission was called Hezron Norori. It's late now. And there were some Ugandan who had also, who were available, who had come by. These were businessmen. They were bringing timber and so on to Kenya, and then going back with the, uh, manufactured products. They would take clothes, they would take uh, sugar, they would take um, uh, mattresses, and so on. So these are the people who now gave us um, uh, a ride. And we were in that boat with my friend. I've never met him since that time up to today. And we traveled on that DG. It was night, so they were navigating using the moon and the stars. And we were traveling parallel to the sh shores until we passed what they call the Margaret Island. And we sailed until we saw a boat which was moored in the lake, and we were told that was a Ugandan boat. So we're now in Ugandan waters. Because if you had been arrested on the side of Kenya, you'd be taken back. So after that, it started raining very heavily. And it was just an open boat. It was raining on us, and there was a sick woman we were carrying in the boat. So I took out my jacket was wearing and I went and covered this sick lady. And we went like that until these guys in that darkness they managed to steer the boat right to the beach. It was about a twenty mile long island. But they knew exactly where to dock. 
and we came out with the boat. We went up almost like a cliff to the village and then settled in the village for a night. We were well received and we spent the rest of the, I mean, we arrived there around 3 a.m. in the morning. And we spent the rest of the night there. In the morning, we walked around the island. These guys set out to go and get me Ugandan papers. So they eventually got me Ugandan papers. And from here, uh, in, the, in the late afternoon, we set sail again. This time, my name was changed to Joseph Ojiwa Wadea. That's how we now travel from this island. And as we were moving again in the lake, it started raining again. We went on to another island where we found one person living alone on that island with his family. It's a Kenyan, a relative of the late Robert Ouko at that time. He welcomed us, gave us shelter and the comfort until it stopped raining. Then we started we continued our journey until we arrived at our destination, which was an, uh, 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 we docked at a shore well, next to I mean, parallel to a Ugandan town called Iganga. So we spent the rest of the night. We arrived there after 2 a.m. And the following morning, we went to Iganga, took a taxi, drove, drove up to Jinja. We changed into another taxi. And at the entrance of Owen Falls Bridge, we found a, a roadblock. And they were expecting identification. And they saw my name, this was you were there, and I had also certificates of tax, called me Solo. I'd paid my taxes for the last three years. So they waved us to pass. That's how we went entered into Kampala. And then I managed to track my friend Kampala with the ship And then he sent me. And then I now put him in the company that comes. I spent some time story. Um, when we docked in, uh, on the beach in Uganda, it was very late uh, at night. This is the mainland. We went to a village where it was around 3 a.m. in the morning. We were taken to a, 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 a hut to sleep. And there it was, I mean, a lot of mosquitoes. I've never been in a hut where there's so many mosquitoes. 
and there were big mosquitoes. We had to sleep. In the morning, these guys had brought bicycles because we were going to catch a bus, and the bus was about 15 to 20 kilometers away from where we were. So um, uh, we had, I was to, supposed to be carrying a bicycle, but the place was hilly, so I put my suitcase and the career, and I spent most of the time running as I just ran that all that distance to where the bus was. When we arrived, we found that the bus itself had a puncture. And the puncture was being mended very kenyeji, the way we usually mend <laughs> bicycle tires. They had removed the, 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 the tube, pumped it, and then fixed the puncture. And then on we started driving on this bus. I was sitting in front next to the driver, and the um, radiator was not far away from me. It was heating. Each time they would have to pour water to cool it. In those days, Uganda was busy reconstructing the roads. And it had rained, and it was fairly muddy. So we reached a place where there was a lot of mud. There was a diversion through the bush. And the bus diverted but in the process, we got stuck in the mud. So I had to come out to push this bus for nearly one hour. We managed to get out of the, the mud and then to now travel to Iganga. We arrived in Iganga, and that's where we found the, the, the taxi which took us to Jinja, and then on Jinja on to, to Kampala. So I'm, I'm, I'm just narrating this story to complete what my friend had already said uh, to, to the media there. But I'm just, this is a, just a story about so many other stories that can be told by the people who have participated in the struggle for change in this country. This journey has been long and has been fraught with a lot of difficulties. When I arrived in Norway, I was adopted there. Eventually, I was given an office um, by NORAD, uh, and uh, I opened up now Ford external office because by that time we had started Ford and the leaders here could not speak internationally so I'm the one who used to talk on behalf of the Ford movement outside there explain our story as Kenya the kind of struggle we are engaged in in this country the kind of international support, uh, support that we required uh, so whenever they were doing some interviews, you will get the then U.S. ambassador to Kenya, Mr. Hemston here. You will get the minister for uh, foreign affairs here, and myself from Oslo, Norway, talking uh, to BBC or to the VOA uh, on the issues in Kenya. And when, eventually, our Kamukunji rally, which was the reason why I was being hunted, and the day that when it was supposed to take place, you will have seen those photographs of our people on the behind of the, the trucks, Shikuku, Rengo, and so on. Again, I am the one who drew the international attention to what was happening there and confirm the stories that were going on there. So through there we were able to mobilize a lot of support for our struggle here in the country, struggle for, for change. And as you know, that rally is what eventually moved Khan to repeal 
Section 2A, Article 2A of our Constitution and allow for formation of political parties. So all those people took risks. Everybody took a risk in this country. It was not something that came easily. There are those who will be talking a lot this today. They were there, they were grown-ups, but they were nowhere at that particular time. If they were there, they were on the opposite side of history. But I really want to take the opportunity